been a while. Today we're writing a Greta Van Fleet song. I'm only joking, it's Led Zeppelin. Hello there, ladies and gents, and welcome back, finally, to One Man Bands, the channel where I take popular musical artists and write songs inspired by their style. Apologies this has taken so long. I've been involved in a number of other musical projects, doing some production and doing some drumming, doing some collaborations, which you may have seen. But 2022 is shaping up to give me far more time to make these videos for you guys, which I'm very excited about, because I've missed you guys. So if you enjoyed the song that I write today, leave a like, comment to let me know which band you'd like me to do next, and subscribe so you can see when I do. Speaking of which, we're nearly at a thousand subscribers. That's crazy. Thank you so much to those of you who have come along for the ride, those of you who are just joining us. Um, that's insane. Like, they say that the first thousand is the hardest, and it has been a pleasure every step of the way, and it just drives me to make more of these videos for you guys, and it really, really does mean so much to me, and the interactions we have in the comments, your suggestions, makes it all worth the effort that I go through to make these videos. And for a thousand subscribers, I have an idea for a video that I'm going to make which I think will be very entertaining for you lot and potentially very embarrassing for me. So if you're not already subscribed, do it now if that sounds like something you'd like to see. It might be a massive mistake, but who cares, it'll be fun. Anyway, Led Zeppelin. On Monday, I covered Led Zeppelin's classic Stairway to Heaven. I apologize to all Guitar Center employees. If you uh, haven't seen that yet, I'll be making references to the things that I learnt covering that song throughout this video, so you can click up in the top corner to watch it if you haven't done that yet. I am assuming that the majority of you are probably familiar with Led Zeppelin, formed in 1968 consisting of bassist John Paul Jones, guitarist Jimmy Page, drummer John Bonham and frontman Robert Plant. Trailblazers in hard rock, they are responsible for some of the best-selling music of all time. Their influence stretches far and wide, even to this day. I mean, you'll be hard-pressed to find a rock band that doesn't cite Zeppelin as even a minor influence. And in my opinion, that praise is absolutely warranted. Zeppelin are one of the few examples of a band where each of the members are considered amongst the greatest in their specific discipline. The immense range and mythical lyric writing of Robert Plant, the weaving, the weaving twisting, twisting bass, bass lines, lines of John, of John Paul Jones, Jones. Jones, the iconic riffs and gymnastic solos of Jimmy Page, and the thunderous grooves and endlessly satisfying beats of John Bonham. Each of these members was a game changer for their instrument at the time that Led Zeppelin began. So let's see how I've dissected their styles and reassembled them to create a song inspired by Led Zeppelin. First off, the guitar. Jimmy Page has a style of playing which really fascinates me. Being the only guitarist in the band, it's like he's playing lead and rhythm guitar simultaneously. Let me show you what I mean. In the intro of my song I wanted to do something acoustic, an homage to Jimmy Page's entrancing, hypnotic acoustic guitar playing. Page has this habit of exploring the hand positions he finds himself in on the fretboard. It's like he finds riffs that he can play while still holding the main chord that's going on at the time. He makes riffs out of his chords, if that makes sense. Let's take Tangerine, for example. While he's holding down the chord shapes in Tangerine, he's using his free fingers to fret single notes that add embellishments over the top of the chords, kind of turning them into a melody.
And this is what I was aiming for with the acoustic intro of my track. Picking these chords that wouldn't use all of the fingers that I had on the fretboard and then using the free fingers to fret a melody to create a riff around the chords that I was playing. Just who you are And looks different from afar So be wary of course, the most popular, famous example of this is probably Stairway to Heaven, which is bang in the middle of chords and a riff. So that's the kind of thing I was trying to reference with the intro of my song. Moving on to the way Paige handles the riffs for his electric guitar, I wanted to pull from the heavier side of Zeppelin for the main body of my song. So we're bringing out this bad boy! Ah oh, yeah! Tone-wise, for both the heavies and the cleans, Page was a proponent of the classic Les Paul through a modified Marshall Plexi. He would also often use a boost pedal to get the maximum sustain out of his guitar. This is a good starting point for a Page-esque sound, although he did play a whole range of guitars across the years with Led Zeppelin. Everything from a Dan Electro 59 to the double-necked SG that Gibson made him specifically so he could play Stairway to Heaven live. If I ever get to the point in my career where I can have a guitar made specifically so that I can play a song live, that is when I've made it. I mean, it's maybe wishful thinking, but a man can dream. You really can't go far wrong with a classic rock tone like this. There's a reason that it's like the most famous combination of guitar and amplifier ever, because it works, it sounds great, and Jimmy Page would ride the volume and tone knobs and the different pickups on his guitars to shape his sound throughout a Led Zeppelin set. It's, it's really versatile, as long as you're just this side of heavy distortion, you can go any way you like with it really. It's, it's great, I've really enjoyed writing with this tone. So onto the song. In a lot of Led Zeppelin's heavier music, the more riff-based pieces, they tend to use the main riff as the basis for the verse. Take a song like Out on the Tiles, which, by the way, if you've ever heard the Rival Sons song, Pressure and Time, I'm about to ruin it for you forever. Sorry. So when I came up with a riff, I also allowed it to become the basis for my verse. And this is the riff I came up with. It's a busy riff, but it's pretty straightforward to sing over. While it's kind of noty, if you were to simplify it, the chords that it was playing over are essentially just like... You know, there's not actually a whole lot going on there, it's just a lot of notes. The chord progression that would run underneath, pretty straightforward. But I got a bit more methodical in the pre-chorus of my song. One of the common traits I noticed in some of Jimmy Page's riff writing is he had a habit of writing a riff, especially the more bluesy ones, and then playing it slightly modified somewhere else on the neck. For example, Black Dog, which the pre-chorus of my song is heavily influenced by, you get this going into the chorus. See, it's like the regular riff, and then the riff once again lower down. So in my pre-chorus I came up with a similar thing where I had one riff play and then a very similar riff that was closely related and still very bluesy played one string down.
Do you know what I mean? So this is influenced heavily by Black Dog and some of the more bluesy riffs that Page has penned over the years, the ones that pull pretty heavily from the blues scale. <laughs> As we move into the chorus, this tends to be the place where you're most likely to find Jimmy Page just playing straight up chords. I think this is a result of Jimmy Page playing the only melodic instrument apart from bass in Led Zeppelin. It means that he's most able to present different feels and textures just by changing the way that he plays. In Good Times, Bad Times, you have this acrobatic riff going on during the verses, and then big open chords being strummed much more aggressively, leading to this huge tonal shift without even adding or removing instruments. So with my chorus containing a lot of space, a lot of places where there wasn't more than one note being played at a time on the guitar, I thought it was a good opportunity to lead into a chorus that was made up almost entirely of big, open, heavily strummed chords. Playing big open chords, letting the strings ring out and strumming hard is the oldest, simplest and probably most effective way to fill out the entire frequency spectrum on a guitar, which you're going to need to do if you're the only person playing chords in the song. Later on in Led Zeppelin's discography, they would start to experiment with organs and electric pianos synthesizers even, uh, to fill out the space slightly more. Regularly these things are played by John Paul Jones, and that's more what I was going for in the later half of my song. But for this earlier, sort of rough around the edges period of Led Zeppelin that I was trying to go for with the first half of my track, it's all reliant on making sure that the guitar is doing most of the lifting. Before we move on, I do want to touch on some of the techniques that I tried to include in my solo. Sorry. There we are. First of all, just kicking off with a classic rock and roll trope that Jimmy Page does like to use, just going like this. Good times, bad times, he starts the solo in exactly the same way. And then the Jimmy Page triplet pull-offs, which are sort of his answer to John Bonham's triplets, where you essentially just go You can hear him do this in Heartbreak here. The string bends where you take a note on one string and then you bend up to it on the string below. Play them both at the same time, you get this cool dissonant ring. Essentially exactly the same as that bit in Stairway to Heaven. And then ending with the super quick hammer-on 30 second note pull-off things that you get at the end of the Stairway to Heaven solo. So put those all together and here is the guitar solo that I came up with, which is just sort of a patchwork of different Jimmy Page solo techniques. <laughs>
there's honestly so much to say about Jimmy Page's playing. The way he rides the line between serving the song and demonstrating his supreme technical ability is really clever. And over the course of a five minute song, there's only a few of his tricks and traits that I was able to squeeze in. He does so many things so brilliantly that it's kind of a combination of all these things and the way that his influences have shaped him that makes him sound so unique. There's no real shortcut to sounding like Jimmy Page. But learning these tricks and trying to incorporate them into my playing and use them to write was genuinely one of the most challenging things I've done on this channel and it's taught me a lot. So thanks Jimmy. Now we're going to move on to the first of the two Johns in Led Zeppelin. John Paul Jones is arguably the reason that Led Zeppelin songs sound so huge, despite the fact that they, for the most part, only use three instruments. The bass tracks are kept front and centre in all Led Zeppelin's music. I mean, at times, just as loud as the guitar. You can really hear what's going on. Honestly, the remastered versions of all of Led Zeppelin's music are an absolute godsend for this kind of thing because we can now hear what John Paul Jones is doing in glorious clarity and through subwoofers, which is amazing because there's a lot going on. The parts John writes are pretty all-encompassing, from simple doubling of guitar riffs to heavy distorted bass chords to runs up and down scales halfway through songs. This guy does a bit of everything. But what I think makes him so special is the way he picks from these techniques and the way that he times them in his tracks. And two good examples are Heartbreaker and Immigrant Song. Immigrant Song is one of those tracks, like I mentioned earlier, where the main riff of the song also serves as the first verse, just with vocals added over the top. And in this case, John Paul Jones is just doubling up what the guitar's doing. And as that's the style of Zeppelin verse that I wanted to go for, I'm just going to do the same thing. The bass is simply going to double up what the guitars are doing. It's slightly different because there's some things the bass couldn't really do that I was doing on the guitar, but here's the bass boosted version so you can hear exactly what the bass is doing in my verse. <laughs> As we move into the pre-chorus, I wanted to channel some of the heavy, distorted bass power chords that John Paul Jones uses in the verses of Heartbreaker. There's almost no guitar in the verses of Heartbreaker, and yet they still feel thick and heavy just because of the way that he's blasting out these distorted bass power chords. It sounds amazing. So my pre-chorus, I crank up the overdrive a bit on my bass and double the power chords that the guitar is playing with bass power chords. Then I juxtapose this with some bass runs, similar to ones that you can hear in the chorus of Immigrant Song, where essentially, again, the guitar just gets out the way and lets the bass take center stage. So you get the power chords, doubling up the guitar power chords, and then when there's a little bit of space, the guitar gets out of the way and you get the bass run as well. So it's kind of a combination of two different things that I love about John Paul Jones playing. I also do a similar thing in the chorus. There's moments where, as the guitar lets chords ring out, it's a good moment for the bass just to poke its head up a little bit. And it's something that John Paul Jones does a lot. It's nice to hear those moments where the guitar takes a step back a little. The bass is there to step in. He's got the confidence to do that as a bassist. But while we're talking about John Paul Jones, it's also important to point out that he was the keys player later on in their discography. Synth player, organ player, and well I suppose on Stairway to Heaven, recorder player as well, I think. He was a big part of their sound evolving over time rather than just rehashing the things that made them big in the first place. 
at the end of my song, I wanted to incorporate some of the Hammond organ sounds that you can hear on Led Zeppelin's later tracks in order to add a fresh new texture right at the climax of my track. John Paul Jones is the Swiss Army knife in Led Zeppelin's arsenal, simultaneously a master bass player, orchestral backdrop, and occasionally recorder maestro. He brings colour, grit, and textural diversity into Led Zeppelin's music. But now, over to the drum zone for the other John and John Paul Jones' partner in crime, John Bonham. There's a lot of Johns, man. Ah oh, yeah, return of the drum zone. Hope you're ready for some John on John action. Mm. However, gonna be honest, a little bit nervous about this one because today we're tackling someone who many people will cite as the greatest ever. I don't really leave myself much room for error, do I? In my opinion, the way that you can tell someone is a really great drummer is if you can just listen to the drums in a song and immediately tell who it is. And John Bonham is the man in this sense. He is the king of feel and groove. The first adjective which always pops into my mind when I'm thinking about John Bonham is satisfying. And there's a couple of ways that I'm going to try and pull from that I think he uses to achieve this satisfying feel. Firstly, although Led Zeppelin have an insanely talented rhythm section, John Bonham spends a lot of his time mirroring guitar parts rather than bass parts. One of the most obvious examples of this is the groove in Immigrant Song. You can almost hear that legendary riff playing just by listening to the beat. It's literally written as if the kick drum is the low note in the riff and the snare drum is the high note. So for my opening riffy section, I went for a drum beat that really closely mirrors the guitar part. For those of you with a keen ear, I stole those hi-hat barks from the chorus of Whole Lotta Love. Bonzo even goes as far as to directly mirror some of the guitar runs with his fills. The other way Bonzo hones in on that super satisfying feel is by embellishing his more straightforward grooves with cleverly placed ghost notes and quicker kick strokes. Take the main drum groove in Nobody's Fault But Mine. This is a fairly mid-tempo song, but these little added intricacies keep the listener's ear. It makes the beat feel more alive, like it's constantly changing. This sort of groove is what I went for in my pre-chorus, especially during the busy guitar sections. I wanted a more straightforward groove to juxtapose those busy guitars, but instead of just playing something super straightforward, I used ghost notes and quicker kick patterns in order to emphasize what the guitar was doing. So essentially my groove could just be like this. But instead I went like this. I love Bonham's use of ghost notes, and that left hand control is so satisfying to listen to. Like, you take that groove, that groove, in Fool in the Rain, it's nowhere near as satisfying without the ghost notes that he's operating with his left hand. I mean, here it is without the left hand. And then with the left hand. To sew the sections together, I couldn't help but throw in some classic Bonham triplets. For those of you who may not be familiar, they consist of right hand, left hand, then kick. And then you just speed it up. Mm -hmm. 
When you start to speed that up and move your hands around the kit, you get this whirlwind of notes that you know is right out of Bonzo's handbook. So that's what I used to explode into my first chorus. There are literally dozens of intricacies to Bonzo's way of playing. And in a similar way to the rest of the band, it's a combination of all of these intricacies that make his sound so unique. These are just the bits of his playing that I wanted to pull from to spice up my track. I just love the sound that Bonzo gets out of his kit. It's boomy and big, but also snappy and tight. That's not a combination that you get very often, but he makes it work and it was a pleasure to try and replicate it. So thank you for returning to the drum zone with me, John, talking about him, John. John. Now it's back over to the desk to talk about Robert Plant, wrap up this Led Zeppelin odyssey. <laughs> So, Robert Plant. I'm going to be honest, this is the part of the track I knew may give me a little travel. Well, not travel, just it's going to be challenging. There's only one Robert Plant. Robert Plant really does just have such an insane range and unique timbre to his voice. It's impossible to replicate. That's my disclaimer out the way. When he belts those high notes, there is just nothing like it. But while I may not be able to pull off a flawless Robert Plant impression, there are a few little tips and tricks that I use to shuffle me a little closer to his sound. Firstly, as I opted for a gentle acoustic intro, something I really loved about Robert Plant's performances in more quiet moments in songs is the way that he slips effortlessly between head and chest voice. He allows his voice to breathe and even sort of crack in moments, like the way that he sings the opening line in When the Levee Breaks. There's something almost vulnerable about the way that he opens the song. He allows his voice to wobble naturally and breathe. And there's something really humanizing about listening to that. It's more intimate. So for my intro, which will be the most chilled out part of the track, I wanted to take some inspiration for that and leave in any of those little folky voice cracks or moments where my voice wobbled when I was slipping between falsetto and chest voice. Like a winding path through groves of green The glistening road beckons to me It changes who you are And looks different from afar So beware Moving on to the verse, in Led Zeppelin's more riffy singles, I love the way that Robert Plant tends to reduce the dynamic range of his vocal line in order to have some more interesting rhythmic patterns or syllabic patterns. Take for example the verse vocals in Immigrant Song. It's almost like a drum beat. There isn't so much tonal movement in that verse, but it's like a gallop when you're singing along to it. It's still fun to sing along to, and it also means there's a really nice contrast when you get to the chorus and the soaring vocal line takes over. So in my verse, I wanted to keep the melody of the vocal line fairly simple and in quite a small range and play around more with having more syllables packed in. Again, contrasting nicely with how my chorus is going to sound with a big soaring vocal line over the top. Then in the pre-chorus, I had to look at the way that Robert Plant plays off of Jimmy Page. There are many moments in Led Zeppelin's discography where both of them manage to be the lead part at the same time. Bouncing off of each other and moving round each other in this dance that allows them both to share the spotlight in one section of a song. As I mentioned before, I wanted my pre-chorus to reference Black Dog. Be like a mini Black Dog. Black Puppy. In Black Dog, you literally have just vocals. Hey, hey, mama said the way you move gonna make you sweat, gonna make you groove. And then just the guitar line. And although there are 
drums in my pre-chorus, you get the vocal line first. And then the guitar riff. And then both at the same time. And then that leads us to the chorus where you get all of the parts coming together simultaneously. Lyrically, in the intro, I wanted to go for some of those more mystical, mystical fairy tale esque lyrics that you get in Stairway to Heaven or Ramble On, you know, without actually mentioning Mordor. And then the rest of the song being more of a classic Led Zeppelin vibe, being about the way that wanting to lead a life, pursuing what you love, pursuing music, can sometimes not leave a great deal of space for anything else. It's bittersweet because you've got to give up other things you love to pursue the one thing that you love the most. All in all, Robert Plant has such a wide array of vocal abilities that he's the only one who can pull them off perfectly. Shifting from vulnerable and tender to harsh and soaring and back again, often in the course of one song or one verse. He really is one of those vocalists who's inimitable. And while I'm not a vocal impressionist, learning from him and trying to incorporate some of his styles into my singing, just like with the rest of the instruments in this song, has genuinely made me a better singer. Honestly, in that Stairway to Heaven cover, that might be one of my favourite vocal performances that I've ever done, especially the opening section. Maybe because I was just letting my voice breathe and be more natural for once, rather than pouring over every detail. And that's something that I'll go on to do in future, just because learning from this style has encouraged me to try that more. So, thank you for that, Robert. It was tricky, but a pleasure. So, there it is. I have finally completed a Led Zeppelin song. This one really did take a lot, and I'm really proud to finally be able to share it with you guys. I hope you can hear all the Led Zeppelin tips and tricks that I've sprinkled throughout the track, uh, because, yeah, happy with this one, man. Happy with it. So, as ever, if you enjoy this song, leave a like, comment which band you'd like me to do next, and subscribe so you can see when I do. This, finally, is my song inspired by Led Zeppelin. It is called Bitter Lovin'. Enjoy! Like a winding path through the groves of green The glistening road beckons to me It changes who you are And looks different from afar So be wary man and child Lest your hearts be beguiled It's the sweetest smelling rose, you know He that commands and repress on demand It's such a joy to be part of the show Show off with a bit of love And with a bit of pain And you're a regular heartbreaker again And you are a regular heartbreaker again Hold out for a bit of truth And let him change the tune Woman, can't you see I'm broken in two? Woman, can't you see it got me broken in two? You'll become bringing lovers along and learn to jack in your heart with a song. You learn to jack and bring your heart with a song. You 
I'll be broken in two You find a passion and you feel it You feel it Honey's oh, gone back for a bit of love And get your bit of love in for days Honey's oh, gone back for a bit of love And give a bit of love in for days My mind's up and steady the ship Cause you've a hell of a part left to play Honey's oh, gone back for a Yeah, your heart will burn bright as the sun